hey what is going on youtube in today's video we are going to do something a little different we are going to take a look at open project which is a project management tool so today's video we are going to do the installation in another video we are going to install another project management tool we're going to compare the two and we're going to see which i'm going to stick to this way you guys can see the features of the different um, tools and then you'll get the installation process in a different video which is what we are covering today for open project the reason why I'm doing this is I need a way to manage or a better way to manage my tasks for the various projects that I am managing. Um, most of them are just passionate projects that I do on the side when I have some free time. So I needed something that was more robust and something that just gives me a better view of the tasks that I had set to kind of see how they are progressing and then also allow me to get in there quickly, put in some backlog um, tasks that I eventually need to complete in order to reach my goal that I had set for myself for that project. So with that being said, let's get started. Let's get installing open project. So in this case, we are using my virtual machine, Ubuntu machine, which is labeled Iron Man. It is a machine that I had set up in order to just run a test uh, environment or development environment just to kind of play around with things. So in this, we're going to um, first update your packages or the repositories. I already went ahead and did that, but if you are using Ubuntu, sudo apt get update. And once you have updated that, or you can do it at the same time, do upgrade and you want to make sure that you upgrade your repositories. So this way we are pulling the most up to date packages. Once you go ahead and do that, the next thing that we want to do is install a few packages. Most of them you might already have. So sudo apt-get install. These are the three packages that you want to go ahead and install. As you can see, I already have it installed. So for this particular software, we need to, it is not in the Ubuntu default repositories. So with that being said, we do need to import the PGP key, which is used to sign these packages provided by Open Project or the team at Open Project. So to do that, we are just going to paste in that command sudo wget which is going to download um, the repository or the key for this repository for the next you want to make sure that we add the open project package source to our sources repository again i'm just going to go ahead and paste this in in the description below or you can just go to google they do have this on their website under their installations and operations procedures so sudo wget um here's the sources list that i was just mentioning open project list and then we are going to throw this guy in there which is the open project um repository that we need in order to download the package so once that is done again we want to run sudo at get update to update our repositories on where we're pulling from and as you can see here we now have the open project added to our repository list Once that is complete, we are going to just simply install it. So sudo apt sudo apt get install open project, and it should pull it from that repository. And then we're going to simply press Y for yes, allowing that to be downloaded and installed. All right. So once that process has been completed, it will ask you if you would like to restart any of the services. Just go ahead and skip that out. Tab, hit OK. All right, so once that has been installed, go ahead and clear that out. And then we are going to go into. So you have two options here, sudo open project reconfigure or configure uh, for initial installation. Running reconfigure will run you through various um, options that you could set. Otherwise, if you run configure, it will run the default setup or it'll run what you had set previously. So the first option that pops up is going to be the addition, the open project addition that we would like to install by default is open project. From my understanding, the other one, as I mentioned here, is construction industry. I did watch some videos on it, but it's not relevant to what I need it for. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. The next step is going to talk about the database. I do not have a database running on this server, so we're going to go ahead and install a new server. 
otherwise if i had one i would just go ahead and reuse the uh, recommendations by the open project team is to not skip so we'll go ahead and install and again a uh, similar thing if we already had it installed the apache web server this open project is hosted on a web server so we will go ahead and install that this is the fully qualified domain name where the server can be reached um we'll just leave it by default or we could do like open project local um but iron man for testing purposes is fine we do not have any prefix so we can go ahead and enter out of there the next one we are not worried worried about ssl in this particular instance as this will not be over the web so encryption is not a concern of mine but this is something that you could look into for your installation if this is something that you are going to be accessing over the the web and not over a vpn or anything like that okay so repository api key um we'll keep note of this this is just by default We'll go ahead and skip this we're not worried about that we're not worried about git at this time uh, and we're not worried about installing that at this time either we will leave this by default as we do not have an smt smtp server set up although this is something i may explore in the future because maybe it could be used to send out alerts um, or notifications with regards to a test that is coming overdue or something like that uh, it is a solo project i'm not working with anybody else for the projects that i am managing uh, but this is something that also might help me stay on top of things uh, when the time comes. Uh, we're going to go ahead and leave it at English. And then we will let it finish its installation. All right. So once that installation has been completed, there will be a few prompts that pop up. You can go ahead and restart those services or skip. I went ahead and skipped everything and didn't need to restart anything. The only problem I did run into is I forgot on this lab machine. I did have another service running on port 80. So I was not able to access this web server. So all I did was just shut that down for now as it is just something that I am just testing out and playing with in the background. Uh, and once I did that, I was able to reload the host name or the IP address for the server. So 192.168.1.103. Now, if you had DNS set up, which is something I'm going to set up on my production environment, I will point to the fully qualified domain name and we will be able to resolve a DNS in order to get to this uh, page. So with that being said, once you are here at the login or the sign in page, go ahead and enter the credentials for admin. And the password is also going to be admin. And the password is also going to be admin per the instructions provided by open project. It is going to prompt you to enter a new password. So we will do admin for the other one and then we'll do admin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Not sure why that little dialogue popped up, but as you could see, I went to the top right and I just clicked on sign in, typed in our password admin and admin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And here we go. We are in the open project on a blank slate. As I mentioned, we are not using a DNS server at this time as we are just labbing it out. Uh, so the first thing that you'll notice is we had a host, host name setting mismatch. Uh, it just pretty much explains that we are resolving a, an IP address instead of the host, main, host name that is set Iron Man, and this will result in errors. So go ahead and click on system settings, and let's just change this to the IP address. Once that IP address is set up here at the top, scroll down to the bottom, and we will save. And that error should clear up. So now we are resolving the correct host name that is set in our settings. And that's pretty much going to close out today's video. Um, but first, let's just kind of go ahead and play around with it. In another video, I am going to go more in depth with the administration of Open Project because I want to compare this solution and another solution, both which are self-hosted and open source. So if we head back into system settings, as you can see, we have a lot of options that are available to us. One of the downsides that I see so far is that the design option is unfortunately only available in the paid version so we cannot change it to the dark theme um 
but let's go ahead and just create a quick project kind of for what I'm going to be using this for. Also, mentioning APIs, I think this is going to be awesome going forward. If I do decide to use this solution, if I have to look into it to see exactly what I could access and what information I could pull or push. Um, but I think this would be awesome to automate some tasks or functions, maybe based on a certain action that I perform, I could upload a, a project task or something like that. I'm not sure what I would use it for, but I do like the idea of it having a REST API. Um, maybe even pulling information based on the project and pushing it to my own calendar because I don't don't think there's an integration with like Google Calendar or anything like that. But let's go ahead and create a quick project. So let's go to the top, go to project list. With a default installation, you will notice that they are, there are two projects, the demo project and the scrum project. So if we go ahead to the top right and click on the plus project, we'll create a quick one. One of the things that I want to go ahead and do using this solution is I want to create a or I want to manage my YouTube videos. Right now, I, I just jot down my video ideas and uh, there's no really method to the madness as far as getting these videos out. I keep writing down ideas and then eventually I write another list somewhere else and I always forget where that list is or I delete it or whatever the case may be. Um, I want to have one centralized location to manage my video ideas and the progress because some days I'll um, record it, some days I'll edit it, and then some days I'll upload it. So I want to be able to track all of that. Uh, so real quick, name, YouTube videos, go ahead and just put whatever you want here. It's not going to be accessed by anybody else, so that's irrelevant. And it's which is pretty cool, you could change the um, project status. And uh, in this case, we are just going to leave it on track, but that is something that is cool and is something that I will look into further to just get a quick overview as to how my project is progressing. Uh, in this case, it may not be relevant. And then we'll go ahead and do test again. All right, so once you create that, it will open up. We are now in the YouTube videos. This is kind of just the overview. As you can see, we have the project description, the details, the status, which I mentioned, and the members which we are not going to be um, including in this project in particular. And then you have the work packages, which we will go into further. Um, so we're going to go into boards. This is one of the things that I'm going to mainly be using, especially for this project, mainly be using to in order to track my tasks or my YouTube video ideas. This is kind of similar to um, there's other available solution, solutions out there. For instance, Jira is one of them. Um, there's many more. I think Trello is another one. Uh, one of the things that I advocate for the most is open source and self-hosted. I don't really talk about it much on this channel, which is something that is going to change going forward. Um, but I do like having everything hosted on my own environment. So this way, if the internet ever goes down or if they, that company ever stops, at least I have all this information still available to me. And it is also not available to anybody else from a security perspective. Uh, so with that being said, Another downside to this, which is not too big of a deal, it would be kind of cool to get um, to have these available options available to us, um, but we are not upgrading. Uh, so we're just going to stick to the basic board. Go ahead and create that. And then just to kind of highlight how cool this is. Um, so again, similar to Jira, for those that are familiar with it, it's going to be the same exact setup. So we'll go ahead and just list out ideas. And then we'll add another one and we'll say, recording and then upload so in there this is going to track the various tasks and then we could go ahead and move it so let's say we want to add a new card and it's just going to we can leave it a task milestone phase but we'll leave it a task and we're just going to say video idea number one and that that will save uh it's pretty cool they have different labels i think i'm hoping we can go in here and change some of these maybe um not sure if it's that big of a deal, but it might be useful to us going forward. And then in here, if you double click it, or if you go back and just click it, um, open details view, right click and then open details view, you get the snapshot over here on the right. And you could go ahead and add a description, you could assign it to people, time. Uh, one of the things that I obviously want to do is track the start dates and finish dates as to when I want to complete these various projects or tasks within that project. So we're just going to go ahead, we're going to add a one day duration and this video should be completed today, December 14th, 2023. We'll save that out. Uh, just some more options that, are, that we have available to us. And I believe we have the ability to even add custom fields. 
So if we needed to add information that uh, is not available to us from the default activity, you could see exactly what is going on and what uh, people are doing within that task. We could attach files, which is nice. And then we have relations and then watchers. In this case, it's just going to be me. Uh, and then the cool thing, obviously, is going forward. Also to point out the December 13th, which is yesterday, it highlights it red saying that it is overdue. Um, but the whole point of this, obviously, so we have an idea, I'm going to have lots of ideas. That's just how my brain works when it comes to these various projects, I just always generate ideas. Some of them don't come to fruition, but some of them do. And then uh, once we are in that recording stage, we'll throw it here and then uploading stage or editing stage would be another one and then maybe a completed stage. So this way we can see all of our completed videos and then go back if we ever need to. Um, but that is one way to check our progress within the YouTube videos. And another feature that I'm going to be using is going to be a calendar so I could kind of see exactly what is in going on during the week. Now you could go to the top and you're going to go to my page. So this is kind of a page that you could set up to have different views that you want to just head over to right away. So in this case, just to set up a simple calendar, and then it will upload the calendar. As you can see, these are the tasks that are set for the week. Uh, here's video idea number one set for December 14th. Now that I think about it, I do not know why it said December 13th on the other one. I would have to see. Maybe I set it for 13th. I'm not sure. But either way, these are the various tasks from the other projects. So if we just go ahead and delete those real quick to kind of get a better view as to how it will look for our one video. All right, so now we have just our one video. So let's go ahead back over to our my page. And here you can see so for the week, we have one video idea that we need to record. So if you just click on that, it'll bring it right up and get us the information that we need in order to either edit it or, or just see what the video is about or the task is about. So that's going to close out today's video. As I mentioned earlier, we are going to dive a little bit deeper into the open project solution for managing my various projects. Uh, that will be in another video. We will also be comparing it to another solution that is also open source and free. That one's going to be a little bit more unique as far as the installation goes because there is no what web front end, which is something that I want because I want to be able to access it upstairs, downstairs, or if I'm maybe even in a different location through VPN, whatever the case may be, I want to be able to access it through the web. Um, but with the other installation, you have to, there is some additional settings that is hosted within a GitHub repository that I found that you could go ahead and set up a, a front end for that project or for that project management solution. So that's going to be fun and unique. And, uh, and then we'll compare the two and then we're going to see which one I like the most. Hopefully that gives you a better understanding and maybe you could use it for your project management. So that's going to close out today's video. I hope you uh, take something away from the installation process of open project. I look forward to um, checking out the two solutions and seeing what is best for our environment. As always, never stop learning.